Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Thank you for tuning in to The Dean Show. We're going to be talking about the difference between judging someone and giving the loving advice. This week on The Dean Show, it's such an important topic. We're going to be covering it with my next guest, Sheikh Omar Suleiman, here on The Dean Show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. This is The Dean, this is The Dean Show. 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 Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu Now you just said something in Arabic. What'd you say? I said, inshallah, God willing. <laughs> <laughs> you said, assalamu alaikum. How are you? What does this mean? Peace be with you. We never, it never gets old because the Dean Show is known for simplifying things, making it very simple for the people because some people are out there like, why do these guys speak in Arabic? Eddie, you're not Arab. You're an American. So uh, we start off with peace and you defined it. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, tell, us, uh, tell us now, you, you, uh, you've been on the Dean Show before, back yeah. when we were SD. Yeah. How's it feel being back now on HD? Mashallah. <laughs> you look even better on HD. Mashallah. <laughs> <laughs> you did it again. See, the alarm is going off right now. See, we got this alarm when every time you say something in uh, Arabic, uh, you said Mashallah. What does this mean? Mashallah means, uh, you know, admiring the creation of God. Uh huh. Now, someone, oh, again, That's there's right. a lot of not yet Muslims out there, and they're like, okay, why don't you guys just say these things in English? Why do you keep saying them in, 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 in Arabic? Well, so How would you right. answer that? It's a habit. That's one, obviously, and also the Prophet, peace be upon him, used to say these words. So we're emulating the Prophet, peace be upon him, mm -hmm. saying these words. So it's part of our terminology. Now, again, someone says, "Okay, what, what Prophet are you talking about?" The well, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Uh, real short, who was Prophet Muhammad? Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the final messenger that was sent to mankind. Mm -hmm. Now, when you accept Muhammad as a messenger, how did Jesus, Moses, and Abraham? How do they all fit in? Do you exclude them? No, absolutely not. In fact, uh, Allah says in the Qur'an that to disbelieve in any one of the messengers of God is to disbelieve in all of them. So is it safe to say as soon as you accept Muhammad as the last, right away you accept all those that came before him? Absolutely. You accept everything that he brought with him. So what he brought with him as well was the confirmation of the messengers that came before. You said something in Arabic, Allah. People have heard it probably a thousand times. But there's one person or a thousand out there that tune in for the first time and they think, okay, Allah, what is this? Why don't you just say God? Who is Allah? Who is Allah? Allah is the God, the, the one true God um, who sent these messengers and prophets to call to the worship of that one God, the same God of Islam, Judaism, Christianity, all of the religions mm -hmm. that claim to believe in one God. Uh, the, the God of Abraham, peace be upon him, the God of Jesus, peace be upon him, and the God of all of them. Is Islam a new religion? Is Islam something new that came with Muhammad? Islam is a continuation of the, uh, the same message of submission and attainment of peace by submitting yourself to God and submitting your will to God and obeying His commands. So Islam is the religion of God Himself and it is the religion of Adam all the way, peace be upon him, to Muhammad, peace be upon him, and until God inherits this earth. So it is the, it is, it is the religion of worship, worshiping one God. I love it because it just makes sense. Islam makes sense. It's simple. It provides all the evidence and proof that you need to know that it's indeed from the Creator. It's not made up by a man or a group of men. It's indeed from the one who created mankind. And he sent all the guidance, the blueprint, how we need to live so we can be successful in this life and have eternal paradise in the next. The topic today that we want to discuss is the judging someone many people when you try to give them the loving advice and some people don't give advice obviously the right way so how can you determine Sheikh, what's the difference between when someone is judging you and someone is giving loving advice to you use an arabic word that's you said shake you know <laughs> so how do we that's a good, that's a good question someone think what's this guy uh, he uh, sells milkshakes what do you, why do we call you shake I don't know why you call me Shay. You tell me why you call me Shay. I don't call myself Shay. <laughs> well, these are all titles, yeah. whatever, that are used for respect and scholarship. But back to the question that you asked. You know, yeah. how do you determine what's loving advice and judgmental advice? Well, number one, um, are you giving advice for the sake of that person's good, or are you giving this? Are you giving advice for the sake of your own ego? Many times when we give advice, it's to make ourselves feel better, not to make the other person feel better. Uh, the Arabic word for advice is nasiha. And nasiha uh, means to purify. 
and it actually means to refine something. So the stage of purification, which is the last stage of purification, which is refinement. So the Arabs used to say, nasahtu al-asr, it's the refine, that I refined the honey. Uh, and so the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, ad-deenu nasiha, the religion is sincere advice. And so what that means is that nasiha, when I give nasiha, when I give sincere advice, my goal should be to purify that other person of some flaw that they have, destructive quality that they might have, uh, or characteristic, um, to help them out of a situation that's not good for them. So it should be for the sake of that person. If it's for the sake of that person, that will translate into beautiful words and into good advice and into good speech. Um, and hopefully the person recognizing as well that this is coming from a good place, that this, that this is not coming... Um, you know, and it's interesting because uh, the religion is sincere advice and at the same time, Allah strongly... Um, in the Quran, strongly condemned ridicule and mockery, okay, so which is called sukhriya. And Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa an yakunu khayra minhum, wa la nisa'un min nisa'an asa an yakunna khayra minhum. Allah says, let not one of you ridicule another group of you because they might be better than you. And let not a group of women ridicule a group of women because they might be better than them. And so the point is, is that if while I'm giving advice, I'm giving advice on the basis that I am better than you and I'm telling you that I'm better than you and I'm, and I, and, and I'm looking down upon you, then I'm not giving you advice, I'm ridiculing you. I'm doing something that's a major sin instead of something that the Prophet, peace be upon him, described as the entire religion, which is sincere advice for the sake of your betterment and bringing you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and making things easier for you. Has there ever been somebody that you sincerely wanted to give advice to, but you know you had that trepidation now that you're a little bit worried that there, you might break up a relationship or you might um, mess up a friendship between you and someone, but you really have this, this need, you have, because isn't it something that is incumbent on Muslims when you see something bad that you are to advise, that you are to invite to good, forbid evil. Have you ever been in this situation? Absolutely. I think all of us have been in that situation. The idea is that how severe is their situation? And is it better for me to advise through words or is it better to me, for me to advise through example? Sometimes leading by example is much more effective than words. Uh, so there are some people that, that are just not in a position where they can properly accept advice. Uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that the worst people in the sight of Allah are those that people avoid giving advice to, ittiqa'a fuhshi, which means out of fear of his foul mouth. You know, there's some people that have a really bad temper and if you try to give them advice, they're just going to flip at you. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said that you should, that you should avoid, or, I'm sorry, that those are the worst people, those people that are actually avoided uh, because of their temper. So people just leave them alone and they essentially let them destroy themselves. So the, the point is, is that again, um, there are some people that you, know, you avoid giving advice to because of their temper. There are some people that you avoid giving advice to because perhaps you know, it's, it's a minor thing that you want them to learn on their own. Uh, you're not at a point in your relationship yet where you have that level of trust where they can look to you and they can really, uh, they, you know, they see you in that advisor capacity. And so you want to you sort of build that relationship a little bit more. I mean, da'wah is advice, right? So sometimes you don't give, you, you, you give da'wah through your actions. You give da'wah through, through, you know, through, through, you know, you invite to the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through your actions, through the way that you live your life and you carry yourself. But at the same time, you're not, a point, you're not at a point in your relationship yet where you can speak to that person. And as an advisor, you need to really recognize when your advice is counterproductive. Like the Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him. When his father responded to him uh, with, this, uh, with this threat of murder and humiliation when he just called him with very gentle words. Ibrahim, Abraham, peace be upon him, he didn't sit there and continue to advise him. He said, peace be on to you. Uh, I will seek forgiveness for you. Okay, and that my Lord is verily a gracious Lord, he's a compassionate Lord, he celebrates my supplication. So Abraham knew, peace be upon him, that his father was not in a position to receive advice anymore. We're going to take a break, we're going to have to go to break, but when we come back, I want you to give me a live example in your life or a story that you know that you advise someone to turn out good and maybe something that turned out bad so we can benefit from a live experience. Sure. Think about it, we'll be right back with this and more here on The Dean Show. It's simple to understand. Islam means submission, look at the word, submission not to yourself, not to your desires, not to anyone or anything. Because at the end of the day, you get something, you always want more. You get some weed, you want more. You get some drugs, you want harder drugs. You get a girl, you want a nicer girl. You get a car, you want a nicer car. You get a house, you want a nicer house. We've got so many pressures. 
by enslaving yourself, worshiping God, loving God. But submission to the one who created you. And by worshiping God and seeking His pleasure, you get pleased and you enter paradise. God bless you. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on the Dean Show with my good friend Sheikh Omar Sunayman. Okay, so have you thought about a live example that now you got the courage, you got up and you were like, for the love of the creator, I got to talk to this person, whatever it was, or you end up getting smacked upside your head, <laughs> something happened, good or bad, so we could benefit, or you know someone's relating a story. People like stories, they like to, you know, live examples. Look, you've got to understand that, you know, particularly in my capacity as a preacher, as an imam, I've had many examples of where advice has gone well and many many times where advice has not gone so Tell well. us, please, share with us. I have to be very careful, but, okay. <laughs> you know, because I don't want to sacrifice the trust of anyone. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, just, just generally, I mean, I can, I, I can remember many times where I'll, I'll catch up, you know, particularly I think that one of the major issues that we have with our youth in particular is obviously dating and relationships and things of that sort. So I can yes. remember in particular, you know, one incident where, you know, I had to stop a brother that, you know, was, you know, dating and was getting to the point of committing fornication, you know, uh, just outright fornication and things of that sort. And he wasn't heeding the religious warnings. Um, and finally, when I, when I sat with him and I spoke to him, um, I didn't necessarily talk about the consequences in the hereafter, I spoke more about the worldly consequences. And so that's one of the things when you're giving advice, you really want to try to stop that person from committing the sin by any means necessary, right? So I kind of spoke to him about his career, his family, and things of that sort. Then that finally humbled him to where he could also receive the advice about the hereafter as well. And, um, you know, I look back, I'll, I'll give you an example of where the Prophet, peace be upon him, so advice so. went well. Mm -hmm. um, and it's in the same it's in the same situation where a, a, you know a, a young man came to the prophet peace be upon him and he told the prophet peace be upon him give me give me permission to commit fornication I want permission to commit zina to commit fornication now the prophet peace be upon him he didn't smack him upside the head he didn't tell him to go away rather he reasoned with him first and foremost his smile peace be upon him was enough you know and and talking to the man the young man. Uh, in a way that he could properly understand in his capacity. So he, he tells him, you know, would you like someone to fornicate with your mother? Mm -hmm. And the man said, no. He said, would you like someone to do that with your sister? He said, no. He said, what about your aunt? He said, no. So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, nas. that's how people are too. And he put his hand on his chest and he prayed for him. So the point is, is that the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not ridicule him. He didn't tell him that you'll go to hell if you fornicate. No, I'm not going to give you permission to fornicate. Rather, he came down to his level. He spoke to him on terms that he could understand. Now, someone might say, I've actually had this situation where a father tells me, you know, I, I tried to tell my son, I said, would you be okay with someone uh, dating your mother or committing adult fornication with your mother? He said, well, if you were dead and, you know, <laughs> and mom, you know, was dating again. And so he said it totally didn't work. It backfired on him. And I told him, I said, the point is not necessarily the same words that the Prophet, peace be upon him, used here, but rather the approach. We learned from the manhaj, from the methodology of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And the methodology was to reason with him on his level and on his terms. And your body language expresses your sincerity, right? It expresses your compassion. It, expresses, it should express your concern. Okay, so there's a huge difference between, let's take the same words, okay? If I said to you, would you be okay with someone committing fornication with your mother? Or if I said to you, would you be okay with someone doing that with your mom? You see, it's the same words, but the approach, mm -hmm. the, 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 the way that it was expressed changed. One is with a smile and reasoning and, and really asking a question. The other one is, you know, is a form of condemnation. It's not really asking a question. It's, it's, it's condemning the person, the individual. So advice should be certainly to, to beautify that person, to, to make that person better. And it should express your concern and your compassion to that individual. 
Now, there's a hadith, and I think it fits in uh, quite well with this uh, topic, where the Prophet, peace be upon him, he gave an example of people being on a ship. And if you can take Absolutely. off with this about you had a certain group of people on the top of the ship and you had other people on the bottom of the ship. And then from here, if these people didn't come down and give them that loving advice, and then every, the ship ends up sinking. Can so you? this is a hadith that's narrated in Bukhari, actually. It's a very beautiful hadith where the Prophet, peace be upon him, he described the ummah, he described the nation as, you know, the believers, as, as, as a group of people on a ship. And he says that the people on the upper deck uh, you know, are, are the, the worshippers, they're the religious ones, and then the people on the lower deck are the sinners. And he said whenever they need water, they don't want to disturb those that are on the upper deck. So they drill a hole into the bottom of the ship to get their water. And so the people on the upper deck, they say that, they, they come down and they yell at them and they say, why did you drill a hole into the bottom of the, of the ship? And they say, because you were, you were agitated by our asking you. You were irritated by us. And so the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that if they let them do that, then the entire ship sinks. Otherwise, the Prophet, peace be upon him, said that the entire ship is saved. So the point is, there's so many different things. Actually, I teach a class uh, called Prophetic Musings. Yeah. Uh, some of the analogies of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And I go into quite some depth with this example. Um, uh, there's so many things. Number one, there's an African proverb that if the youth are not initiated into the village, they will burn it down to feel its warmth. Mm -hmm. And subhanAllah, there are a lot of times where you see that there are people that are away from Allah, away from Islam, but no one's reaching out to them. So there's a disconnect between the religious class and the not-so-religious class. There's grouping. And so the masjid even, the mosque, becomes a clinic that doesn't accept uh, sick people. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. People who have issues in their lives don't go to the masjid, nor are they made to feel welcome in the masjid, in the mosque, because they're not dressed properly, they're not worshipping properly, they don't know how to pray, we know what's really going on in your life. The, the masjid is supposed to be for everyone. So the religious class is supposed to go out to those that are falling and faltering and give them advice lovingly and not make them feel like they're, they're, they're irritating them. You know, I, I was reading a study from the Pew Research Center about churches in America. And they were saying that young people are turned off by the church because they feel intimidated by the elderly, for example. There's a sense of intimidation. So that intimidation factor has to be removed. And that can be removed from uh, loving advice. And, uh, you know, and, and in fact, one of the other meanings of nasiha is to bond. Mm -hmm. it, it brings people together. And so sometimes that time when you sit down your brother and you, and you talk to him in a loving way and you give him advice, uh, it's not about the issue at hand anymore. He now trusts you. He loves you. He appreciates the way that you came to him. And so nasiha actually brings people together. And so that's what the Prophet, peace be upon him, is teaching us. That when you see something on Facebook or see something on YouTube or see something on Twitter or hear about something you know, with someone that you know, you should give them the, the dignity of, of, of sitting with them and saying, look, I love you, I care about you. If you need anything, let me know. If there's a reason why you've resorted to the sin, because a lot of times we just, con we just condemn without asking why, perhaps, what led to that sin. Now, why did the people drill the hole in the ship? Because they were thirsty. So why do people commit sin? Because there was something missing in their lives. So perhaps someone committed you know, a sin because there were, there were family issues. So the point is, is that I need to also, part of my giving advice is, is showing concern. Is everything okay? Why did you resort to that in the first place? How can I help you? How can I be there for you? Uh, and inshallah, I will tell you a story inshallah as well that I just thought of uh, afterwards. Inshallah. You got the story ready? Okay, we're going to take a break and exactly. then we're going to come back with more and to wrap it up here with Sheikh Omar Suleiman, giving that loving advice. We'll be right back on The Dean Show. Word can't have defects in it, can it? If it is literally God's word, yes. it cannot have defects. I mean, but this was written by men. We yes. know that this is a collection, right? Even if you have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospel according to. According to. Right? Um, the, the thing about the Quran, and the biggest, and, and you know, I'll leave you with this, is the biggest thing for me is, if the Qur'an is exactly what it says it is, and this doesn't matter whether you're Muslim or not, if the Qur'an is what it says it is, the Qur'an is literally the Word of God, delivered via Gabriel to Muhammad, who was an unlettered man who couldn't read or write, right? And he was just told to recite, right? That was the first thing, right? First thing he was told, Absolutely, recite, yes. right? Um, so if it is literally the Word of God, then that's pretty important to me. And, and before I became Muslim, I said, if this is the Word of God, then 
I'm going to follow it because I'd be stupid not to. Back here on the Dean Show, and we're talking about the right way to give advice and the, and, uh, the right way and the wrong way, and then you had a story before we went to break. Please share it with us. So um, this was a story, actually, someone that took Shahada with me. He became Muslim with me, um, you know, in college. And, um, you know, for a few years, he disappeared from the masjid scene. He disappeared from the mosque. He really wasn't uh, involved in, in the religion anymore. And he calls me out of the blue three, four years later, and I pick up the phone, and I was so shocked that it was him. And, you know, he's going off on Islam, going off on Allah, going off on the Prophet, peace be upon him, just saying blasphemous things. And he's trying to start an argument. And I wasn't responding to him. Okay, so I was being quiet. And, um, you know, at the end, basically, where he ranted on the religion and things of that sort, you know, I told him, I said, well, you know, I'm sorry that you feel that way and to each his own. You know, I, I, I certainly don't agree with some of the things that you said. And, you know, hopefully one day we can get together. It's been a long time since we've seen each other anyway. Hopefully one day we can get together mm -hmm. and we can kind of discuss these issues again. He was like, wait, that's it? He was, he was surprised that I didn't go off on him. So I was like, yeah, I was like, you know, you're, you're entitled to, to your views, but, you know, I miss you, man. I haven't seen you for a long time. So mm -hmm. when are we going to get together and maybe we can discuss this over lunch? So then he just broke down crying. And so I realized that there was something deeper than that. And so he starts to tell me about some things that were going on with his family. And he starts to tell me about some things going on in his life, some personal issues. And I helped him with that. And then next thing you know, he's back at Juma. He's back in Islam. So his issue was never theological in the first place. It was a cry for help. It was a cry for attention. And so sometimes we have to understand that people that sin, people that mess up online, people that post outrageous photos or start saying certain things, it's really a cry for help. And as a, as a brother, as a sister, just as I'd be concerned for my sibling, I wouldn't just want to correct them with the sin. I'd want to make sure that I help them and that I'm there for them. I'd be concerned about their mental health, their spirituality, so on and so forth. I should afford that same thing to my brother and sister in faith. Uh, let's go to the flip side for the person getting the advice too. So we know that you giving the advice, you should go out of your way to be loving and kind, giving loving advice. But let's say you've gotten some advice. You've gotten it 10, 20 times, and maybe you didn't get it, you know, sugar-coated the way you'd like with roses and candy and all that. How should you also, because we know that the Creator tells us that advice benefits the believer, right? So, and then there's a flip side to it. It, it, it increases... Don't judge me. Yeah, don't judge me. So now, should you also be, even if you didn't get those roses with the advice... It's come to you. Can, can this sometimes be a sign that you have to reflect too that there might be some truth in some of these things that people have been trying to advise Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Uh, look, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, one of the great companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, he said, the most hated words to Allah are, don't judge me. When yeah. someone gives you advice and you say, don't judge me. So, you know, if you read the books of, of, of spirituality and Tuskia and Islam and things of that sort and you read the lives of the companions, uh, one of the things that's consistent is consider advice even from your enemies. Consider what people say about you even if it's your enemy. That's deep. Why? Because perhaps there might be some truth to what he's saying. And a great scholar by the name of Imam Ibn Qudama, may Allah be pleased with him, um, he said, if I had a scorpion on my back about to bite me, I would expect someone to point it out to me. So he said, you know, so he said, you know a spiritual disease is far greater than a, you know, than a scorpion, which is which is going to cause physical harm. So that which would cause me spiritual harm is is greater to me. So I would certainly want someone to point that out to me as well. So if someone points something out to me or gives me advice in a very rude manner, quite frankly, with personal insults and just in a disgusting way, then I'm going to ignore the disgust. I'm going to ignore the personal insults. But I'm going to say, hey, there might be a scorpion on me. I'm not going to say, well. I don't like the way you told me about that scorpion. I'm going to go ahead and let it bite me. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's a story that I, that I always tell. It's a story from the great Imam, Imam al-Shafi'i. Mm -hmm. He's one of the four Imams of, of, the, of the Orthodox Islam, the Sunni school of thought. And he, uh, and, and he was once sitting down, and he was a great Imam, giving lectures in the masjid of the Prophet, peace be upon him. In fact, only a few years after the Prophet, peace be upon him, died a hundred years or so after the Prophet, peace be upon him. So, uh, passed away. He's mm -hmm. giving lectures in the mosque. Great Imam. Someone walks into him and says, Are you a Shafi'i? He said, Yeah, I'm a Shafi'i. He said, Inna kafajirun fasiq. You are an evil, wicked man. Now, the students of Imam al Shafi'i wanted to jump this man. Imam al Shafi'i, he raised his hands and he supplicated and he made dua. He said, Allahumma in kana sadiqan. Oh Allah, if he's telling the truth, 
فَاغْفِرْ لِي وَرْحَمْنِي وَتُبْ عَلَيَّ Then forgive me and have mercy upon me and accept my repentance. وَإِنْ كَانَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ And if he's not telling the truth, he didn't say وَإِنْ كَانَ كَاذِبًا If he's a liar. He didn't resort, he didn't go sink to that man's level. He said if he's not telling the truth, forgive him فَاغْفِرْ لَهُ وَرْحَمْهُ وَتُبْ عَلَيَّ Forgive him and have mercy on him and accept his repentance. And so the beauty of that is that look, in life, you will always have imbalanced praise and you will always have imbalanced criticism. I'm a public figure on my Facebook page, right, or my Twitter. You'll have people that will say, you're so awesome, mashallah, greatest man in the world. Then you'll have, so imbalanced praise. It's, 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 I have to be able to ignore that. And at the same time, you know, I get 300, 400 emails a day of people criticizing, not criticizing things legit, but, but sometimes mocking me. Uh, my, my, my appearance, my, my words, uh, slandering me, my family, right? I've had people say nasty things about my mother, right? Who's passed away, may Allah have mercy on her. People that try to poke at you. And so one of the things that my teacher said, he said, look, you're always going to have cheerleaders and haters. <laughs> imbalanced praise and imbalanced criticism. What you need to do is you need to be able to reduce that to noise so that you can recognize balanced praise, which is encouragement, uh, so that shows you what you're doing well and at the same time balanced criticism so that you don't lose yourself in the process of doing that good and if it's even good in the first place so it doesn't matter who's saying what to me he might be telling the truth right and that was the, the, the sincerity of Imam Shafi'i that you know that person might be telling me the truth even if I don't like the way that he said it and people don't like the way that he said it so when someone gives you advice and, and someone criticizes you and hates on you Ignore the hatred, ignore that, but don't be someone who meets Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that very characteristic and that very sin that was pointed out to you just because of the way that it was said to you. That's deep. It's balanced. I love it. It's balanced. Yeah. Now give some loving advice. There's a lot of people there holding on to the deen by a thread. May Allah protect us from that. It's a scary yeah. thing. So now you have the opportunity to reach out. We only got a minute left and give some loving advice to those who are struggling. Everyone is struggling with their faith in some way. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not teach us Islam as, or, or faith to us is not being on a constant spiritual high. It's that even whenever you're going through your low moments and you're going through your, your moments of discouragement and disappointment, you never completely lose faith. And so a lot of times, you know, we're made to feel like low Iman, low faith is, is just like no Iman, no faith. Whereas sometimes, you know, your Iman, your faith might feel low. You might be going through something in life. Just don't lose faith altogether. Don't, don't sink your own ship. Don't despair as the devil despaired. Always have that balance of fear and hope and always make sure that you're progressing even whenever you're, you're feeling low, that you're, that you're making amends and that you're progressing towards Allah. And don't lose hope. Everyone goes through their low points. Beautiful. We have to go, but uh, hadith, it says, Talabul ilmi faridatun. Allah Akulli Muslim, is that how it goes? Yes. That seeking knowledge is incumbent on every Muslim, and a Muslim is one who submits to the will of God. The fuel for that car is that gas, fuel for the iman is knowledge. Where can people go? Inflips, I heard. You got some really great stuff there. Tell us about it. So, alhamdulillah, one, you know, I, I, uh, I left imam, I kind of retired early from being an imam just so I could focus on, on knowledge. I, my passion is studying and teaching. So, I have some, you know, videos on YouTube with Quran Weekly, and I've got some. Uh, university, you know, some institutes that I teach with, uh, Mishkai University, Bayina, Al Maghrib Institute. I have classes with them. And my, my own project, my own personal project is ilmflix.com, I L M F L I X.com. Hundreds and hundreds of hours of Islamic lectures, very unorthodox in regards to the topics that are being addressed. So we're addressing topics that are, so we have some tafsir and things of that sort, explanation of the Quran. And at the same time, we have some topics like fiqh of pregnancy. Uh, you know, uh, black companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, how the Prophet fought racism, practical things you can do with your life. So it's hundreds of hours. It's all for free, inshallah. All you have to do is go online and register at ilmflix.com, I-L-M-F-L-I-X.com, and you get a whole library and live classes, inshallah, as well. Jazakallah khairan. Thank you all very much. Well, yeah, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Thank, thank you. you. And there you have it. So much love to give. That's right. And how are you going to get the love if you don't open your mind and your heart? There's so much love to give, so much loving advice. And now you've gotten it here, some great advice. What are you going to do with it if somebody's been trying to deliver something to you? Like we've been trying to deliver the truth. That there's only one God, that you worship Him alone, not His creation. And you have all of everything that He's sent through this last and final message of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon Him. It's encapsulated in Islam and the loving advice that we've given you. 
and we're giving you is to look into Islam. Call us at 1-800-662-ISLAM to get your free Quran so you can see this blueprint that we live by. And then you can see it in action studying the Prophet Muhammad's life. So we hope to see you back here again next week on The Dean Show. Follow us on the Twitter, like us on the Facebook where you can keep up with all of our shows. Help share this message. Because if you love, if you care, you share. So make sure you share. And we'll see you next time. God willing, inshallah. Until then, peace be with you.